So 3.3 is all about increasing and decreasing functions and also about the first derivative test, which is one of the most powerful things we're going to learn the entire year. So the basic thing, there's two real definitions of increasing and decreasing. And the most kind of basic definition is if the graph is going up, it's increasing. So what that means is every point f of x sub 1 has to be less than f of x sub 2, the next point. It has to be less than or equal to the next point. So that's increasing. And you could argue that you couldn't really have this equal sign on there, so then it wouldn't really be increasing if they were equal to each of them. But each one's going up just a little bit. Now, the problem with that definition versus the one we're going to work with, which is the slope f prime of x is greater than 0, is kind of depends on the endpoints. So think about this. If you have a parabola, and this thing's over here at 3, maybe on the x-axis, it's incre increasing from like 0 to 3 and then decreasing from 3 to 5, or from negative infinity to 3, or 3 to infinity. That's where it would be increasing and then decreasing. The question is, do you include the 3 or not? And the key is, it really doesn't matter. It depends on your definition. For these, at 3, the derivative is equal to 0. But in case you think about this, everything right up to 3, and including 3, it's all getting taller, right? 2.9 is smaller than 3. 2.999 is smaller than 3. So in this version, you would include 3, like a bracket. And But then the weird part of it, about it is, decreasing it would be 3 would be higher than the next point. It would be higher than the point after that. So it would be decreasing from 3 to infinity as well. So I'm kind of actually in favor of this bracket, but most people use parentheses when they're dealing with interval notation as far as increasing and decreasing. So when's the graph increasing? When the derivative is greater than 0. When the graph is decreasing is when the derivative is less than 0. All right, for most people, that's pretty good because it's kind of what they think about when they think about derivative. If it's positive, it's increasing. Negative, it's decreasing. So then you kind of have some obvious things here. If you can do the derivative, you want to. So we have 3x squared minus 3x. And what we want to know is when is this f prime of x, or y prime in this case more likely, where is this going to be? decreasing and increasing. So you really got to figure out where it's equal to zero. Take out GCF if you can, solve this however you possibly can, and you have x minus one. So you have zeros at zero and one. So what I would do is I would do a sign chart. And we're going to talk about these, especially when we get to the first derivative test. And when you make this, you really want to label it. This is the derivative. And I need to put numbers of 0 and 1 on there. And we got checkpoints in between them. We're on the outside. So let's say I check negative 1. Okay, well, I get negative 3 and I get a negative 2. I get a positive. I don't care that it's 6, I just care that it's a positive. If I try a half, I get 3 over 2 minus a half. Half minus one is negative half. So I get a negative between here. And if I try two to the right, I get six and two minus one or one, I get a positive. Now you notice that there are no endpoints on this. There can have endpoints, but it doesn't have to have endpoints. It really doesn't matter. So increasing from negative infinity to zero, and we're choosing to put the parentheses on there. But AP will accept it with parentheses or brackets. So it's really up to you. Most people are going to go with the parentheses. And then we also are increasing from 1 to infinity. Anywhere you get the plus, that's where you're increasing. And then we're decreasing from 0 to 1. As far as an absolute value goes, you kind of have to know a little bit about them. I mean, there is a way of doing absolute value derivatives, but a lot of people forget about them. And I like to, as far as absolute value, I like to think of them as more than what their picture is. So think of this shifting. This was right three, up one, two, three, four. And it's opening up because the two out front is positive. So right three, up four, think about your shifting. And in this case, I can tell you that it's decreasing 
from negative infinity to 3, and then increasing from 3 to infinity, just based on what I know about absolute value graphs. Almost everything on the AP exam is not going to ask you, not going to need to see the work on something like this. It's either going to be a multiple choice question or you're just going to get points for the answers. So however you get this answer, if you want to know how to do the derivative, that's fine. No big deal. And the first derivative gives you slope. So you want to think about slope in terms of increasing and decreasing. All right, so let's go through this little, this little thing over here. We'll draw a cubic with the maximum at 3, 3, and the minimum at negative 3, negative 3. Now, I do mean relatives on these. So what we're going to have is we're going to have a graph that looks something like this, right? Okay, when is the graph increasing? Well, it's increasing from negative 3 to 3. Here to here. And it's decreasing from negative infinity to negative 3. And also from 3 to infinity. It's going down here and it's going down here. People sometimes have trouble with that being positive infinity. Usually not by the time they get to calculus because it's going to the right. That's why it's positive infinity. Alright, so here's the crux of it before we get to the first derivative test. What's the slope at these points here? So here at negative 3 and over here at 3 the slope is equal to zero. So when we start getting to the first derivative test, this point right here is a relative minimum. It happens to be that the slope is equal to zero. Now, don't forget, you I did say cubic, but I could have drawn it a little bit more like this. I still have my local minimum, I still have my local maximum, right? And I'm still decreasing, I'm still increasing, still decreasing afterwards, right? So we're trying to get at figuring out how to find these relative maxes and relative minimums. It happened to be where the derivative is equal to zero, or possibly undefined in this case, right? Well, think about this. If the graph is going down and then comes back up, you must have a minimum, right? If the graph is going up and then starts to go down, you're going to have a maximum. And that's the crux of the first derivative test. If it goes down, when it comes back up and the point's there somewhere, either as a curve or as a corner, it's a minimum. If it goes up and then comes down and it's either flat or it's a corner, it's a maximum. The only way that that's kind of thrown off, if it goes up and comes back down, has to be there. It can't be an open circle. That does not work. Could be a corner, could be a flat spot, but it has to be a point.